I can hardly believe I'm saying this, but after the longest break from Grand Prix action since the war, Formula One will return to our screens in less than a week's time. The Austrian Grand Prix will be on this weekend, and we're here to preview a race that will hopefully go ahead this time. Welcome back to the Formula One Grid Talk podcast. We are powered by F1 Chronicle. Visit f1chronicle.com for news, reviews, and opinions on all things F1. Hosting today with me, George Housen, and joining me today are sports journalist Louis Edwards. Hello. Multimedia journalist Ruby Price. Uh-huh. And engineering student Away Medford. Hi. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to everybody on Twitch as well. This is the first one where we're actually live streaming it. Uh, we'll do this for every show from now on, so expect another one of these shows on Sunday, shortly after the race is concluded. Um, just search for F1 Grid Talk on Twitch. And feel free to leave us a comment as well. We'll, you know, we'll interact with you guys as well after the show has been the show proper has been done. We'll do a little bit of a post-show as well. But yeah, so let's start with the 2019 champions, Mercedes-Benz and Lewis Hamilton. Now, Louis, despite Mercedes' obvious incredible success in the V6 era, Austria has not been that happy of a hunting ground for them, and particularly last year as well. Yeah, they seem to have, I don't know if it's just sort of Austria or sort of the, the altitude that Austria is at, they just don't seem to handle the sort of the cooling of the engine. I remember they had you know, double DNF a few years back due to the fact that the engines were overheating. And last year, it wasn't brilliant either, as Lewis kept running wide at Turn 1 and eventually broke his front wing and Bottas just didn't have the pace of the, the Ferraris or, or the Red Bulls. So it would be interesting to see what setup they're going to bring and see if, because we do, of course, have a double header at Austria, maybe they've you know somewhat made special sort of upgrades just for this race just to make sure that it goes a bit more smoothly than it had some previous years. Yeah, that's the thing. We've got the Austrian Grand Prix this week, and then after that, we've got the Styrian Grand Prix. It's effectively a second Austrian Grand Prix, same track, same conditions, just a week apart. Um, I mean, that's a very good point you raised, Louis, because, you know, Ruby, uh, Mercedes had a double DNF, I think, in 2018, 2019, last year. They obviously struggled, but the main reason why they potentially struggled was because of the heat, and we're not forecast to have that this weekend. I mean, one of the things that I know is that Mercedes obviously won back to back 2014 all the way to 2017 for the Austrian Grand Prix. And the obviously the car differences at that point were monumentous. You know, Mercedes were miles ahead of the field in the earlier seasons. But I think it might, as Louis said, be weather and obviously if we're forecast thunderstorms for this Austri- this Austrian Grand Prix, it might just, you know, give Mercedes that edge that they need to not have to worry about overheating. Yeah, they probably won't have to worry about overheating, but Owain, the guy who's won the last two Austrian Grand Prix, Max Verstappen, if it does rain, you know, he's he's a guy that's usually untouchable in those conditions. Yeah, obviously we saw in, in Brazil in 2016, he, you know, he knows how to handle himself in wet weather and is, you know, some uh, you know class of the field up there with sort of Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton in, in changeable or wet weather conditions. Obviously, he's you know found strength at the Austrian uh, Austria previously, you know, better be that you know home race for Red Bull, but also, but you know, obviously he's got that support that uh, does make the trip over. He won't have that this time, unfortunately, but you know he does seem to run strong there, so that could cause a massive issue for Mercedes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Max Verstappen he's going for three in a row. I think only one guy has won three Austrian Grand Prix, and that's Alan Prost, and he didn't win in three in a row. So it's, if you might, if a Red Bull driver managed to win three. Austrian Grand Prix in a row, that'd be very impressive. Potentially four, obviously, because it's the same track uh, a week later as well. But, Louis, I mean, it's it's interesting for Red Bull. A lot of people are thinking that they're going to be the ones that challenge Mercedes closest this year. Are, they, are you thinking that Albon and Verstappen could be ta- challenging Hamilton and Bottas this weekend? Definitely not off the cards. I mean, Red Bull have definitely changed their car a lot from, you know, last year to this year. You know, they've gone for that sleek and design rather than sort of sort of following that Mercedes sort of aero. And the Honda engine looks very good. So, yeah, I think it could really, you know, starting at a track that they are strong at, potentially could win, you know, back-to-back races straight off the bat. You can't sort of rule them out at all. It's, it's certainly interesting to start, rather than Australia, where often Mercedes do very well, starting at a track where Mercedes tend to dip off a bit, especially in the last couple of seasons. It'd be interesting to see how Red Bull can, 
you know, take advantage of that, potentially really force Mercedes' hand to and put real pressure on them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a track, like we said, I mean, Mercedes were very good there. The re in recent years, Red Bull and Max Verstappen in particular have been not quite untouchable. Obviously, the contact between uh, Leclerc and Verstappen last year. That brings us on to Ferrari, Ruby. And people are thinking that Red Bull are going to challenge Mercedes this year, but people are already writing off Ferrari, which I think if they are going to challenge this year, this is a track they should succeed at because half the, half the track is straight. It's a very short track, but half of it is flat out straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we look back to the Barcelona testing, which was months ago, so, you know, obviously we're not going to be racing with the same cars, we're not even going to be racing with the same cars that would have raced in Melbourne, but Ferrari were sort of appeared to be off the pace back in Barcelona, and you are right that, you know, their engine clearly does pack the most punch, but that's provided that, you know, as we saw last year, they can extract that package from their engine in the first place, but... Yeah, Austria is one of my favourite Grand Prix because of the you know speeds that cars get up to because of the straights. So maybe Ferrari do have a chance. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean, Charles Leclerc, Owen, very nearly won last year. You know, it was a great battle between him and Verstappen for the lead. I mean, it, it'd be unfair to write them off, but if it does rain, from what little wet running uh, we have seen, they don't do as well because they're reliant on the power unit rather than downforce. Yeah, Ferrari typically run a high straight line speed kind of setup. That's been true in previous years and obviously recently has been. So, yeah, you know, it benefits them having sort of three large straights joined by a few corners at Austria. But like you say, you know, having that lack of aerodynamic grip, they can, they're lucky in that they have a horsepower advantage. So they can put a bit more wing angle on and try and counteract that, some of those problems. But I don't know, we don't know actually. To be honest, we've, the last, this is the first time we see the cars run in anger. We can't. I don't think we can actually accurately judge where the teams are going to be compared to the testing running and also last year. You know, we could, they could be coming back with a, you know, some, uh, some new concepts on their suspension on the, on the car that we obviously haven't seen and haven't had a chance. You know, we haven't had, what, eight or nine races to sort of understand how, how, where they're at. So it could be quite interesting. I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah, it's the mystery. I mean, it's weird having the first race of the year in July, but that's the situation we find ourselves in. Um, so, some teams have been doing some running. I think I've seen Sadie's doing running at Silverstone. I think uh, Vettel's been doing running for Ferrari at Mugello and places like that. There's still room with Mugello race this year. We don't know what's going to happen or not. I have a feeling it will, but we'll have to see about that. But yeah, I mean, let us know who you think is going to win the race. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting one. It's definitely between the usual three teams. But behind that, Louis, we've got we've got an interesting battle really because let's not forget about Racing Point, who. I think they've got a decent chance here. Yes, they have copied the Mercedes car from last year, effectively, and Mercedes don't run too great at Austria. But even a, even last year's Mercedes would still be competitive, you'd think, against teams like McLaren and Renault. Oh, definitely. That, yeah, that Mercedes may, may not have been great, but we're comparing it to the top three teams that, you know, you know, far ahead of the rest of the field. And, you know, Racing Point had done an amazing strategy just to sort of completely mug off the rest of the midfield by copying Mercedes. <laughs> but we have to take the testing with sort of more pinches of salt than usual. But their car looked incredibly strong. In, and it was for, I think, anybody at Racing Point were like, oh, this could actually be a really good season. So I think, yeah, it could be a real interesting one to see how they perform and see where they line up in that midfield battle because yeah they have outwardly copied Mercedes we don't know how much they've copied and how much of that is actually going to have real benefits we'll see we'll see it's, there's definitely a possibility they'll be up there with McLaren and Renault I mean R Ruby what's your thinking for best of the rest I mean McLaren obviously were best of the rest last year with fourth but the Renault engine in the back of the McLaren and the Renault is not exactly known for being the best in terms of power delivery. Yeah, I'd, I would agree with Louis' verdict on, you know, Racing Point are probably in the strongest position regarding the shape of their car. But as you say, the McLaren have, are sort of hindered with the Renault engine, which, you know, helps them get further back up the field, ironically, at the same time that the Honda really helps the Red Bull get up the field. But... I think 
they'll just be, you know, it's McLaren. They're unhappy if they're not in the top spot anyway. So until they're back there, I think they'll settle for fourth, you know, of the teams. Yeah, they'll definitely be happy with best of the rest. And I think they'll be expecting to try and catch up with the guys ahead of them, but it's going to be difficult with that engine in the back. Part of the reason, obviously, they've moved to Mercedes for next year. But yeah, it's good. it's going to be an interesting battle in the midfield. I mean, it's it's probably going to be similar to last year in that it's very close to any other teams. You can't you can't even discount teams like Alpha Tari or Alfa Romeo or or any other guys down there. I mean, it's it's a real tight battle, especially if like it's predicted we do get some rain to mix it up. Yeah, uh, obviously rain does produce a more interesting race as we saw at Hockenheim last year. You know, it, it can go completely can completely insane, as it were. With the midfield, I'm, I'm interested to see how Haas would do under the rain. Because obviously, they had a quite a lot of problems overheating their tyres, uh, putting a lot of energy through their tyres. 2015 to 2018 Mercedes cars, you know, they put a lot of energy through the tyres and, and burned through them uh, on a dry track. But obviously, the, the wet tyres sort of work through block movement. So putting a lot of energy into the tyres actually helps you there. So they could be quite strong. I'm not sure how how well Tori and uh, and Alfa Romeo actually do in the wet, but you know they they you you would think that they'd be very similar to Ferrari in certain respects. Obviously, just due to the fact that they use a power unit. I think the unknown sort of yeah yeah sort of the unknown variable here is McLaren. Obviously, with a switch from Renault to Mercedes engines, I believe is that is that still going ahead? I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I think they're allowed to do it. So yeah. Bearing in mind that power unit did seem to be their biggest issue last year, with hopefully a more competitive, more reliable power unit in the form of the Mercedes. Hopefully, it won't upset the dynamics of their car too much with them having that Mercedes power. But it, you know, they could they could really start taking the fight to the top of the midfield even more so than they already have. You know, breaking into the top three spots. I think they could do that for next year. They're switching the switching to Mercedes next year, aren't they? It's not this year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, next year. Oh, I thought. Okay, sorry. I know it's it's all confused, isn't it? It's all like the regulations been pushed back and everything. But yeah, they still have very little power units this year. It's all right. But yeah, so yeah, I think the car and are a bit of an unknown. But I'd like to think they're going to build on what they did last year. And obviously, with Signs and Norris, even though Signs is going to fry for next year, you know they got two incredible drivers there as well. And obviously, Ricardo on on the way as well. Um, the future's looking pretty bad, bright for those guys. But yeah, so a team. I have, to, I have to touch on these guys. Williams, they're always so hard to preview, Louis, but it's not as hard as last year because I think there is a bit of optimism around the place despite recently losing their title sponsor. Yeah, it's all got a bit wrong for Williams during this break. <laughs> you know, losing the title sponsor, the Williams family having to sell up their share of the company, it's not brilliant. But I think I said this way back when, in February when we did our testing podcast. <laughs> Surely it can't be any worse than last year. <laughs> it does look an all right car. I do, I do think they'll do better. They've tested this car a lot more. They've, you know, they've got some things correct this year and they've, they've been, rack, they did rack up a lot of laps. So I think they have a lot more data on this car than they did going into last season whether you know they're playing catch up the entire time i think they definitely can get off on a better foot this year and maybe not be you know the three four second the lap off the pace but yeah it surely will be interesting to see where they're at and what this what the mercedes engine can do in their car hopefully they've sort of got rid of all that well got rid of a lot of the drag that was hindering their car last year yeah surely it can't be worse than last year <laughs> I'm hoping for Russell's and uh, Latifi's sake that it's not worse than last year. I mean, Ruby, if if Russell can, you know, translate his form in the virtual Grand Prix to the real Grand Prix, room for a treat. I mean, I I do really rate this guy. The more the more I see him, the more I see of him, the more I think to myself, this guy is a future world champion. He's just got he's got the right temperament, and obviously with the Mercedes connection as well. You think sooner or later, maybe if Bottas doesn't perform, or when Hamilton retires, and however many years it is, he'll get himself into a top team. I mean, it's not out of the realms of possibility for him to drag that Williams into the points this weekend. I would agree. I'd, I'd be very surprised to not see George Russell in that Mercedes in the next two years, if unless Bottas beats Lewis or Lewis retires. Williams are going to have to curb his enthusiasm for victories now that he's got a taste of it, what with the F1 
the Grand Prix. But yeah, George Russell is a very strong contender for maybe 10th if that Williams can perform. And if not, he'll at least be best of the rest in terms of 11 to 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's let's see what happens with him. You know, he's he's got a very cool head on his shoulders. He seems to kind of ride out the chaos around him. I think he got 11th or 12th in Brazil, which is a hell of an achievement. I think he was 11th again in Germany. I, it's, he was so unlucky to miss out on points last year. I really just like Albon missing out on the podium. I don't know how neither of those two things happened uh, because see that we should probably see those both right at this this season at some point though. Now, another team that struggled last year, obviously, was Haas I mean, we've just we've mentioned them a bit in terms of, you know, them struggling with the temperature of the rear tyres, and that could be helped in the rain. But I think this year, they seem to have got on top of their major problems in testing. So you'd like to think they'd at least be competitive. Because last year, it's, it's easy to forget, but last year, they had incredible qualifying pace. I think Madison got fifth at this race in Austria, but then fell down to, like, 19th by the end. So there is there was pace in that car. It was just holding it out for an entire race that was the problem. Yeah, it seemed a bit glory run at the time. I, I hope that they've got a handle on that. You know, I hope that helps them out. Although, ironically enough, that actually, thinking about it, might not help so much if it does rain. But uh, yeah, I think Hass's problems typically seem to be more towards tactics outside of the, the car performance, you know, ta- uh, both tactics and just sort of finger trouble in operation of the team. I've seen typically at the pit stops that it's really come to a head hopefully they've got ahead on that you know that's another year in f1 i guarantee that they've been training super hard as much as they can during the break that they've they've had and hopefully that will have sorted out the issues for them but yeah they're a bit of an unknown quantity i think yeah it's going to be interesting to see where they all shape up because all the teams have had to do a shutdown for a while but they have had a chance to work on the cars i'm sure they have at some point so these i believe it's Sorry, I was. Uh, oh, I believe it's yeah. I believe in place of the summer break, they've taken their three week hiatus at some point during the during the time that we haven't been racing at all. I don't know where how that is affected by. Obviously, the UK's got a furlough scheme. I'm not sure what the teams have done regarding that. You know, whether they furloughed people or not, or whether they've laid off people. I haven't heard anything about any layoffs, but obviously, it's, money has been tight without without being any you know any racing or anything like that. So, yeah. Well, I can tell you now, at least one of the teams has laid off people. I'm not going to say who because I want to protect my source, but I know that's definitely happened for one of the teams. For the other ones, I don't know. I imagine they've furloughed quite a few people, maybe laid off some people, but it's hard to say. These cars that we're going to see, though, aren't the same ones as testing. They will have been worked on to them. They have done testing since then, so they will be a bit more worked on than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how it shapes up. I mean, I imagine you'd imagine that the top three is going to stay the same, which order potentially could change. But Racing Point, I've got a feeling they'll do quite well this weekend, but we'll see we'll see how they get on. But yeah, so I think that's most of what we were going to talk about, really, apart from bold prediction. And I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate the one that I said just before. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to go for George Russell, just getting the points, getting the top 10. He's first in Formula 1. Louis, what are you saying? Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. This is actually really... I mean, the race going ahead could be a bold prediction, some would say. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't even know. I'm going to go on a whim and say Albon Albon to win. Albon to win? Whoa. That's worth a fiver, surely. Ruby, what are you saying? (laughs) Um, I'm not sure if it is a bold prediction or not, but I think at least one Ferrari might end up in a collision. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's a prediction bold is debatable yeah. but yeah <laughs> could, could be interesting to see yeah. two, in, two in the same collision um, quite possibly <laughs> colliding with each other yeah it's not out of the possibility at all Owen what are you saying what's your bold prediction I'm going to go with Ocon for fourth oh, oh. back with a vengeance <laughs> Esteban I are bringing what, triple upgrades to this race that's impressive if they are, yeah. So, so obviously we've just, Ruby, you've given your prediction for winner. But let's let's go for a while. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the not so bold prediction of Max Verstappen to win. <laughs> Louis, I already said Albon. Oh, sorry, that was bold that was you to say, not Ruby. My bad. <laughs> Ruby, I think it's Max Verstappen's race to lose, really, based on the form book of 2018 and 19. So. Max Verstappen. 
Owen, is it going to be a Red Bull full house? I can only say so much to get to try and uh, bag myself some Mercedes swag, can't I? Do <laughs> 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 so I say, uh, Boss? I reckon Bottas. Well, I was going to go for a win. He was the last Mercedes driver to win at the Austrian Grand Prix. Yeah. Yes, I definitely knew that. <laughs> 2017, yeah. And he got, I think, did he get, no, he didn't get pole in 2014. He got second, I think. I know it was Williams 1 2 in qualifying. Yeah, it was Felipe on pole that day. Oh, Felipe, baby. What a man. But yeah, so just go, just go to the last ones as well. Podium, second and third. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Hamilton second. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Albon to get his first podium. I'm going to go third. Louis? I'm going to Red Bull 1 2. So Albon, Verstappen, and then. I'm going to go Hamilton because I don't trust that Ferrari package really. Too. <laughs> what makes you say that? They've been so reliable. <laughs> yeah, but like they were like looking to get so much downforce on this car this year that they ended up slapping a load of drag on it, and that's why they were so off the pace in Barcelona. <laughs> so unless they go back to their 2019 car, I don't really have much faith in them getting. <laughs> Fair enough, Ruby. <laughs> um, I'll say second Hamilton and third Bottas. Owen? He's one, two. Probably. I think Leclerc's <laughs> third. <laughs> like a Leclerc third and then Hamilton second. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our predictions. Please do let us know yours. Um, and yeah, that rounds out today's show. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you for joining us on Twitch as well, those who tune into the live stream. But yes, just to mention as well, we do now have an official store for our merchandise as well. I'm sure Jared will link it into the uh, From Chronicle post when it goes out. We've got T-shirts, mugs, all sorts of things with famous quotes from Formula One down the years. Some of your favourite come, come to Steiner and uh, Kimi Raikkonen quotes included on that as well. But yeah, we are also available on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Omni Studio. And Pocket Cast, just search for the Formula One Grid Talk on all those and you'll be able to find us. Uh, follow us on Twitch as well, F1 Grid Talk on there. And on Reddit, so please look for, if you want to give some advice to us, just search for new F1 podcast, looking for feedback. There's a subreddit as well for the Formula One Grid Talk, please you know, get involved with that. And finally, a Patreon as well, if you want to invest in some new mics and recording equipment for all of us. Thank you very much appreciated. We'll be back on Sunday. I'm not exactly sure what time, probably just after the race finishes, probably four or five. UK time to give some instant reaction and we will be on Twitch as well with that but yeah until then thank you very much for listening goodbye bye bye